reconnect oh did it connect are we connected yes we are live good morning everybody <laughs> Joseph. good morning this is jake Leachko. it's a wednesday morning september 6th and the gospel for today comes from saint luke chapter 4 38 to 44 are we all done no. yeah finish up now Chevelle. come on okay saint luke uh uh, records a um, um, an event in Jesus' life. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. This is Simon, Peter. Okay? Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever. And they, inter and, sorry, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who, had, all who had people sick with various diseases brought them to him. He laid his hands on them and cured them. And demons also came out of many shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him. And when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Yeah. What's your question? Well, yes, yes, of course, yeah. And what? But there's one thing interesting in today's gospel. Yeah. What's your question? What does it mean by she waited on them? Well, that only means she attended to their needs, to the apostles. Okay? So here's a story where Jesus uh, was perhaps with his apostles, and they went to Simon's uh, uh, house. So the, the house of St. Uh, Saint Peter, of Simon Peter, was a place to congregate where the church, the early church, would gather together, right? And, uh, and in, in this situation, they, uh, they had mother, uh, the mother-in-law of St. Peter. What does that tell you? St. Peter must have been married, okay? Um, of course, uh, by the time that, uh, that they... That, that, he was called to become an apostle. Perhaps he was no longer married. We, we have no uh, proof of that um, because there's no record. There's no indication that he was actually married at the time that he was an apostle already. There's no uh, uh, indication that he had children. So it's very possible that he was married at a certain point of his, time, of his life and perhaps uh, his wife died. Right? But he still had a mother-in-law. Right, and uh, you see the devotion that uh, Simon Peter had uh, towards his mother-in-law. That even if uh, he may not have had a wife anymore at that time, he still continued to care for his mother-in-law. See, good thing for uh, for uh, fathers out there to take care of your mother-in-law. Okay, you only have one. Hopefully, so. <laughs> okay. But Jesus said. <clears throat> To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. That was Jesus' mission, right? That, and he said that. Uh, because for this purpose I have been sent. Okay? For this purpose I have been sent to proclaim the good news. Remember that that was how it was by the incarnate uh, uh, word, Jesus, okay? Uh, becoming man, that was how uh, uh, the Father was revealed to us. God the Father was revealed to us as being a father. A very different kind of revelation from how the Old Testament prophets and kings uh, um, uh, knew about God. So that was the mission of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the good news of salvation to each of us. Right? And he says, you saw the situation was the people wanted to make him stay because they loved what he was, what they were hearing from him. 
right? He was proclaiming the truth. So people got excited. This is a very different kind of thing. Hey, please stay with us, right? And he was curing the sick and all that. So please stay. They wanted to keep Jesus for themselves. But Jesus says, well, you know, I have to go also to the other towns. I have been sent not only to you, I have to go to the other towns. So the other towns I also need to proclaim the good news. This is my mission. Guess what? You and I have the same mission. Why? Because we are part of the mystical body of Christ. What is the mystical body of Christ? The church. The church. Very good. Right, Joe? The church is the mystical body of Christ. And all of us are part of that body of Christ. Right? We are all part of that body of Christ. And how did that happen? How did we become part of the body, mystical body of Christ? By? Baptism. By baptism. Very good, Jana. Okay? By baptism, we became part of the mystical body of Christ. So if Christ is the head, we are the body. Well, we're all part of one and the same body of Christ with the same mission. With the same mission of proclaiming the good news. Right? So, yes, yeah, Sophia. Who are the limbs? <laughs> a part of the whole body. Okay, so if we are part of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ had that mission of proclaiming the good news, then we all, by virtue of our baptism, we all have the same mission. Right, Chevelle? What's the question? Oh, what is that? Joe, you're distracting me. What is the question? Ask. Oh, you forgot. Okay. So, to the other towns we must also go. And Jesus is addressing the same thing to us, right? When he ascended into heaven, right? Right at the ascension, what did Jesus say to his apostles? Go, baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? It is a command to be apostles for the others. It is the command to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations. Now that command is not limited to the apostles. That command extends to you and I. We also have to be apostles to others. We have to be apostles to others. We have to be the witnesses of Jesus Christ to other people. And, and where, where and how do we do that? Where and how and what uh, occasions can we do that? Well, wherever we are, wherever uh, our environments, uh, uh, um, you know, bring us, wherever, wherever we are, whether it be in school, at work, uh, within the family, um, doing Taekwondo, or you're doing your band, or your guitar, or uh, classes and all that, you have to bring Christ, you have to be Jesus Christ, Right? Doing this mission wherever you are. Hey, wherever you are. It's like uh, our Lord says, right? Where do, where do you put a lamp? See, do you keep it under uh, the table? No, you make it shine, right? You put it on top of a desk and the light has to shine. Well, we have to be that kind of light, right? We have to be the light uh, for our environments, bringing the light of Christ, Bringing the light of Christ. How do you exactly do that? Okay. How do you exactly do that? How do you exactly infuse and inform your little environments with the light of Christ? How do you bring Jesus Christ to these environments? Okay. Three ways. Three ways. Okay. Number one. Your first duty is to really learn the faith. Really, really learn the faith. Because there's a saying that goes, you cannot give what you do not have. Okay? So you cannot give Jesus Christ to others. You cannot pass on the good news about Jesus Christ and salvation to others if you do not know Jesus Christ. If you have no knowledge of who and what Jesus Christ is all about. If you have no knowledge about the good news that Jesus Christ came to proclaim, you cannot give what you do not have. So the first step in being an apostle is 
to uh, uh, equip yourself with equip yourself with concrete knowledge about Jesus Christ and about the Catholic faith. Okay, concrete knowledge, and in here is where, folks, I'd like <laughs> I'd like us to be to understand this very well. The faith is not. A bunch of emotionalism, uh, emotional uh, 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 expressions of love for God and this and that. Oh, Jesus impacted my life. Or, uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, uh, it, it's nice to be uh, emotional. Sometimes it can help uh, uh, enhance your spirituality. But folks, the faith is not a a bunch of emotional stuff no there, there, there's plenty of rationality in faith there's plenty of science in faith see theology is a science it is not <laughs> emotionalism the theology is a science the knowledge of faith is a science it's a body of knowledge okay? theology is a study of God it's a body of knowledge it is not a hodgepodge of emotions you slap together and, oh, I feel good about being a Catholic. Oh, I feel good about my faith. No, see, no, that is not what the, the faith is all about. That is why it is important for us to know, to know, to understand. And I keep insisting knowledge, 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 understanding is important in living your faith. Why? Because if your faith is only based on emotions, it is bound to collapse because when you don't feel good anymore, you won't practice your faith anymore. <laughs> as simple as that, right? If you feel tired already, if you feel exhausted fighting for against sin, if you uh, feel tired being good, well, you give in to your tiredness instead of uh, instead of what you know and understand to be true and good. See, it is so easy to. To collapse with the collapse of your emotions. If a faith, if your faith, if your so-called faith is only an emotional surge, <laughs> you see, towards uh, what you think you believe, well, when the good feelings are gone, guess what? When the good feelings are gone, so is your faith. No more. And that is what makes people get so discouraged many times because let's face it life is not easy life is difficult life is a big struggle so if you are basing your faith on emotions alone forget it friends it's not gonna last you kids understand this and you have to understand this right faith is not a matter of good feelings that is why i pound on you many times right I pound on you to live the virtues. The virtues will help you strengthen your faith. But that is supposed to be a faith based on knowledge, based on understanding what you are doing. Eh? Not just because you feel good about doing something that you do it. Oh, today I feel good like praying, so let's pray. Oh, today I feel good doing charity, let's do charity. No, faith is not like that. Eh? Faith is based on concrete knowledge understanding your faith understanding what you believe in that is the real basis of your faith it is not emotionalism okay so that's the number one requirement to be an apostle know your faith understand your faith really concretely know the doctrines of the church know that what what there is to pass on to others because you cannot give what you do not have okay so, uh, stop being as funny as some of these people say, Oh, Jesus impacted my life. Oh, wow, I'm a changed man. Uh, you know, I accepted Jesus Christ. I'm a changed man. Jesus impacted my life. And ask them one simple catechism question. Uh, duh, I don't know. Huh. How did Jesus impact your life? <laughs> if you cannot even answer... One simple question about Jesus Christ. Or one simple question about your faith. If you cannot give me an answer to the question, who is God? And you cannot repeat the catechism question about that. I wonder how 
God impacted your life. I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, let's be truthful about this. Let's not fool ourselves. If your faith is full of emotionalism and that's all you're clinging on to, be prepared for a big collapse, especially when you're down, especially when your emotions are not there to support what you, what you claim to be your faith. Faith, while it, while it may be supported by emotions, it is not only based on emotions. We have to understand our faith. We, have to, we need knowledge. We need concrete knowledge about our faith. That is the first requirement about being an apostle. Number two, oh, but I cannot preach. I cannot go out there preaching and talking. I'm not gifted with, uh, with glib and, and, and I'm not as talkative as Jake is. <laughs> so forget being talkative. Forget about talking. The number two requirement being a good apostle and, and bringing Jesus Christ out into the world is give good example. Give good example, Jana. That's right. Just give good example. Because that is the most important testimony that you have for your life. Right? Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. If they see, if people in your environments, in the playground, in your classes, in your workplace, in your family get attracted to your good example, guess what? The next step is to ask the question, what makes you tick? Why do you behave like that? What makes you tick? And the simple answer to that is, well, I'm trying to be a good Catholic. I'm trying to live my faith. You want to learn a little bit about it? Maybe I can help. See? It all begins with good example, my friends. Good example. And then, after good example comes the talking. The talking. Talk to people. Faith comes through hearing. Eh? Faith comes through hearing. That's another saying in the, the, that we, we know uh, um, 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 from tradition. Faith comes through hearing. So people need to hear things. And they won't hear anything if you don't talk. <laughs> so talk. Talking is the third step. But then again, you cannot talk, you cannot say anything to your friends if you don't know. So everything begins from knowledge. Everything begins from understanding your faith. Concretely, really understanding your faith. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, let's, let's listen to what John Paul II tells us. See, John Paul II inaugurated a, uh, a very good new movement in the church, which is this whole new thing of using the media and the tools of media, such as what we're doing here, to do uh, the new evangelization. So as blessed uh, John Paul II reminds us, let me just read here. Yeah, saint already. Uh, John Paul II reminds us. Thank you, Mommy. This mission is not the exclusive preserve of the sacred ministers or religious, but ought to embrace the entire ambit of secular society, secular society, the family, the schools, and every Christian has to participate in the task of Christian formation to feel the urgent need to evangelize. So, so, uh, something, says St. Paul, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. See, I have no ground for boasting. Doing this apostolate is not because of me, not because of you, not because of us. It is rather a necessity laid upon me. By who? By what? It is a necessity. It is a task we, you and I, and each one of us have been tasked to do by Jesus himself. Okay? by virtue of our being part of the mystical body of Christ, by virtue of our baptism, we are all incorporated in that task of evangelizing, of doing apostolate, of bringing Jesus Christ into the world in whatever environment we are in. So, okay, that's it for us, folks. Learn your faith. 
give good example, pass it on. Three simple steps of being an apostle in the middle of the world. That's it for us, folks, today. Thank you very much. Yeah, You have a question? Okay, but we got to go to Mass now. We're going to be late. I'll answer your question in the car, okay? <laughs> have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.